Hey, it's Jason. So I'm here with my 1969 Cushman Town and Fairway Golfster golf cart. Um, be sure to check this video out. It's pretty darn cool on my blog. And uh, what I want to do is, because I keep this parked at the back of my property in the shed, I want to hook up a battery charger to it because when my son and I want to drive it, I don't want the battery to be dead. I'm a big fan of the battery tender brand, and I'm going to hook up this small um, battery charger and maintainer to the 12-volt battery on the golf cart. Very simple process. What I'm going to be doing is hooking up the um, hooking up the hard terminals to the battery, so that way I don't have to always clip it on. So I'm going to physically connect this little device to the positive and negative ports on this Napa battery. So I'm going to just walk through how to do this in like less than a minute. Very simplistic, but if you've never done it and you need to hook up a battery maintainer, you might find this video helpful. So when you get the package, it's going to have the actual maintainer and charger that plugs into the wall. And then underneath of that, you will have the, uh, the prongs or on the back physical prongs that you can clip onto the battery. But I don't particularly like doing that. I prefer to just use the devices that screw right onto the battery. Now this process would be identical even if it was your car. I have these same things on the cars in my car collection. It has a fuse on it. It prevents any um, charge going back in or any of that good stuff. Very safe. I actually use these on solar panels or physically plugged into the outlet. So I just want to show how you'd hook this up so that way, you know, everybody's on the same page here. The red is going to go on the positive side of the battery. The black on the negative side. Now, again, if this is a car, it's going to be the same. Your battery is just going to be bigger. But you don't need to physically remove the battery. You're just going to unscrew the bolt that goes on or the nut that goes onto the bolt that tightens that clamp around it. But you can keep the battery hooked up, and that's really important because on modern-day cars, if you disconnect the battery, it could, you know, cause a few little issues on a highly electronic car. On my brand-new Land Rovers, as an example, if I disconnect the battery, there's a procedure I must go through. So my point here is when we hook this up, you don't have to disconnect the battery. Just loosen up those nuts and slide it on and then put the nuts back on. So let me show you how that's going to work. Now to loosen up the nut that's going onto the bolt that's securing the clamp, every nut's going to be a different size. I typically find uh, 15 millimeter is, is common on these batteries. Um, so, you know, determine the size just by taking different sockets and putting it on just to make your life easier. If you're not familiar, this is a 15 millimeter socket I'm going to put on the nut and I'm going to basically loosen this up so I'm, I'm going to need two hands to do this but I'm going to loosen it up and then when I do that I'm going to be able to lift the terminal uh, I'm going to keep it on the battery sorry I'm going to be able to put the other metal thing on and put the nut back on which I'll show so don't worry so once you loosen it enough you're just going to be able to take your finger and move it you want to make sure because this has some other items plugged into it for the auxiliary lights that you keep anything else on it there, but just unscrew the nut and put it somewhere nice and safe. And we're gonna do this for the other side as well. So I have the nut nearly off here. And I'm gonna lay it somewhere I don't lose it. And you can see that there's some other items already over that driving auxiliary lights and then what I'm going to want to do is take my battery tender and I'm doing the negative terminal which is the black one and I'm going to want to lay over that bolt and then tighten things back down. So what you can see I've done I've taken the negative part of that battery tender device I'm putting right over and then I'm going to take the nut and I'm going to put it right back over and I'm going to tighten it down. So what I've achieved is I now have, I'm going to have the negative section hardwired into the battery. 
So I'll just put that on and tighten it. I'm going to need two hands to do it. But you can see what I'm getting at here. But you always want to make sure that you can just hand tighten this. If for whatever reason it's not hand tightening for you, don't put your socket on there and just start tightening it. Because that means it's not threaded properly. So I just hand tightened it and then I'll take my socket wrench and I will give it a nice twist to get it nice and tight. But the key here is I never disconnected the battery. You want to be very safe when you do this. Um, but the battery stayed connected. So any electronics in the car would have stayed connected. Do the same for the other side with the positive. Once it's hooked up, if there's ever an issue, it could be a blown fuse if it's not charging. So let me hook this other side up now. Now if you're working on an older car, that nut was 13 millimeters, this one's 12. So I had to change my socket to a 12 millimeter for the other side. So don't be concerned if that's the case. This thing is old, so uh, somebody just lost one at one point and I guess used a different uh, terminal. All right, so everything's hooked up, negative on negative, positives on positive, and then with this cable, you're typically just gonna want it to slide out from under your hood. In this case, it's gonna go out from under the, um, the seat. And one of the cool things I have to test it with, and I talked about this in another video, is, is this battery tender makes a little device that plugs in where you can just see the voltage. So I'm kind of curious how much voltage is left on this battery given it's been sitting for a little bit. Now this is a Napa 7558 battery. It's designed for golf carts, but you're typically gonna want at least 12 volts charge on your battery. You don't want it to start falling too low. Golf carts, I suspect the battery could probably get a lot lower because it's not doing a whole lot with electronics, especially such an old one. But a new car, like my Land Rovers, if you get by 10 volts, and that battery gets down that low, you're going to have a hard time getting started. It needs every bit of cranking amperage that's available. So this has been sitting for a couple months, and I've drove it a little bit, but it's sitting at exactly 12 volts, and it's yellow, meaning, hey, it's definitely uh, in need of a charge. So then you would want to hook up the battery tender to it. And the battery tender is going to keep it um, leveled, and it will slowly charge it. Never expect it to charge it quickly. This isn't a quick charge device. It's to keep your battery where it needs to be, and if your battery gets too low, it will not charge it. And to finish up the project, you're just going to want to plug the charger into a power outlet. You can see this is red because it's not where it needs to be. And then that cable is going to plug in, and that's it. This, I think, was 29 bucks for this kit. I would not use such a small one if you're doing this on a car, but a motorcycle, a golf cart, a tractor, a lawnmower, it's okay. But the process of hooking this up is the same on a car as it is this golf cart. Your device would just be a little bit bigger. And this will turn green when it's uh, at exactly where it needs to be, and it will monitor... And if that battery loses charge, it will keep it topped off. So it's a great, great solution. I think everybody that has cars um, should have a battery tender. And of course, this little device is really handy to tell you voltage without using a multimeter. Again, this is the 750 battery charger and maintainer from Battery Tender. You can find the link to buy it under this uh, video. And please subscribe and uh you know, like my channel. It means a lot to me, mainly because I do put a little bit of effort into these DIY videos. Thank you very much. Have a great day.